moving on from this, uh, you have two types of edema, um, whether it's localized or generalized. Um, localized, obviously, it means it's limited to an organ or a limb. Examples can be lymphatic edema, inflammatory edema, or allergic edema. And you can have a generalized edema, otherwise known as anasarca or dropsy. And that's when it's systemic in distribution and it's quite noticeable in subcutaneous uh, subcutaneous tissues. So, for example, renal edema, cardiac edema, and nutritional edema. Now, when we're talking about the fluid which is actually moving out and into these spaces, there's two different types of fluid it can be. It can either be transudate or exudate. So I'm going to tell you about the composition of those. So if it's transudate, the filtrate, um, it's actually a filtrate of blood plasma without any changes in endothelial permeability. It's uh, considered to be a non-inflammatory edema if it's transudate. So there's a low protein content and the main protein in it is albumin and there's low amounts of fibrinogen. So because there's low amounts of fibrinogen, it's, it has a low tendency to coagulate. Um, the glucose content is the same as plasma, the pH is greater than 7.3, and there's low LDH, and generally a few amount of cells. And the main cells in there are mesothelial cells and just cell debris. Exudate, on the other hand, it's the edema of inflamed tissue, and it's associated with increased vascular permeability. It's an inflammatory edema, so it has a high protein content. Obviously, there'll be high amounts of... Uh, high fib uh, fibrinogen, that's the main protein, so it's going to easily coagulate, and it'll also contain some other coagulation factors. Um, there will be low amounts of glucose, the pH will be less than 3. It'll have a high LDH on the other hand, and many cells, which include the inflammatory and parenchymal cells.